In this project-based tutorial series, we're going to go through the entire process of modeling, sculpting, retopologizing, and texture painting a banshee from the movie Avatar, or at least one much like it. So let's go ahead and get started by bringing in our image planes. There are two different ways that we can bring images into the workspace, and that is going to the camera menu, and we want to choose background, then reference image for whichever axis we want to place it along. In this case, we can't really see a visual indicator in the viewport letting us know which axis we are actually facing. To remedy that, we want to go up here to the navigation bar and click on our axis handles and that will reveal our axes in the viewport. And you can always toggle that back off. You can also go to the view menu click on axis or you can assign a hotkey to it to toggle it with your hotkey. So we'll begin by creating a reference image plane for this side profile that faces directly down the X axis here. So go to background, reference image for X axis and I'll locate uh, sketches or reference images. In this case let's choose our side profile. You can scale it move it. You can scale along a single axis if you want with these handles here. You can also just move it freely in screen space using this outer border here. Just clicking and dragging. And you can also move it down the facing axis and so on. So I'll undo that. I'll just choose reset and that looks fine except I want to push it back a bit. Okay, and then I can rotate in my viewport until I'm looking down the Z axis and I can drag and drop an image from the file explorer. So I'll drop an image for my front profile. I'll get a menu that allows me to choose some different options. In this case, let's just choose add as a reference image. What happened to my other image? Did this just copy over it? No, it didn't. Uh, 3D Coat essentially lets you look at one image plane at a time by default. When I get within a certain angle that's perpendicular to the axis I'm looking down, then it will turn the visibility of the other plane off and just make this one visible. So I can push that back. Rotate. I can turn all the planes on. So I can use this other one as a reference here. And with this one, I'm going to reset that one as well. I just need to align them properly. And they're actually not that far off. I want to switch to orthographic view to help remove any perspective distortion. This one looks like it needs to be scaled a little bit. Okay, so that'll suffice for now. So I'll turn that off and go to background. Choose one for the Y axis. And I'll choose the top. Reset. It's facing the wrong direction, so I'll flip Y. Show all planes. So I may have to scale this one up as well. Okay. So let me move that down the align this top image here down the axis. So what I'll do is I'll go to a top view. So I'm going to basically line that up with the origin of the grid and I'll go to the front view and try to line this one up as well. It looks like it's already there for the most part. Okay. So a more small adjustment here. So 
So I'll turn off show all planes and I can click close and now all I see are my reference planes. So how would we get our preview panel and our gizmo back up for each of these planes if we want to make some adjustments here? We go back to background at the very bottom here choose edit image placement. Now in order to bring this back up quickly with a hotkey we can assign one to it because you'll notice there is no default assignment here. So let's hover over this and hit the end key on the keyboard and I want to choose control R. R stands for reference image. So now I can hit my hotkey combination and it brings up this option panel and the gizmo. Now what if I wanted to change this one to maybe a frontal view and we just simply look down this axis or while this gizmo is still active for this particular image plane I can click on choose select the image plane I want to switch to and it would make the switch now if I want to hide just this one I can choose hide and close and now only the top and the front are visible Okay, so I'll hit my hotkey to bring up that panel again. And I'll face down that axis of the image plane that's hidden and I'll choose show. Okay, so I can hide all if I want and then show. Show and then show. I can cycle between them all or just choose show all planes. A good thing about this is you can also adjust the opacity of the plane. You could also adjust the inside opacity to make it much more visible or much more transparent. So just remember, close simply closes this preview panel and your gizmo, but it leaves these intact. So again, if you want to hide those, you'd want to hide them here. Show hide uh, individually or hide all or show all planes here. All right, so with that done, let's go ahead and click close. And we will pick up in the next video by starting to model using primitives in 3D Coats Voxel Sculpting Room. So thank you for watching. We'll see you next video.